Okay, so we are back again. <laughs> again, it's uh, Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. And we're resuming our work on S213 and activating the regulation with the River Corridor Development and Dam Safety. Um, thank you for everyone who did extra work yesterday and our council is coming back to the crash. Um, so we are on the uh, runway to do a read through and, uh, and vote. So, Mr. Brady, if you could rejoin us at the table, we have copies of a new the latest and greatest. All have copies. I gave we have any copies. I think we all have. No, I'm. <laughs> what is in things I within the pile oh. under one piece of paper? <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you, Jim. You both. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Uh, okay, so uh, Mr. Ray, if you can, well, just for people following, extract 7.1, date 2 2024, timestamp 8.24 a.m., pop off the presses. Thank you very much. You can walk us through the highlights, the changes since our last round. That would be great, Kevin. Okay, so your first change is on page three, line five. It's just a uh, taxi for crash in a number yesterday. It's doing RI3 DER. And then your next change is at the bottom of page three, uh, line 20. Um, um, it's really the phrase, and until permanent development, not really the partners begins in the 10 BSA 2754. They submit that report to you. You could remember you wanted a update report, right? Yeah. And they're already reporting on their education and outreach for a couple of years. Right. And so it's just basically using that report. So on page for line 11 through 13, give a summary of the department's progress in adopting the rules required under 10 we say 754 for the regulation of development after the department. So that will be a summary of the public education and outreach, and it always it will also be an update on the progress. Thank you. Um, page four. Line um, 16, uh, the agency at the end of the meeting yesterday adjusted some appropriations amounts. So for uh, staffing to conduct infill and redevelopment, they asked for $900,000 for six community full-time positions to do um, the mapping, mapping requires to conduct education and outreach and to conduct a rulemaking concurrently under set five. And then on page five, they ask for money for uh, contracts and costs necessary to implement the mapping education and outreach for the being permitted under set five. Mm -hmm. uh, next page six, this is the beginning of the changes to the time frame. Uh, this is the deadline for adoption of the rules for Map River Corridor development. Now would be on the July 1, 2027. It had been January 1, 2029. That move on. Mm -hmm. The next thing is on P9. This is when the road permit would be required. Beginning January 1, 2028. It had in January 1, 2030. That's when really the program becomes effective. Yep. Uh, and then you can skip very far in advance to the transition section of the page 21. And that has similar, um, it has uh, a requirement for when the mapping must be initiated, so July 1, 2025, and then that same deadline for adoption, July 1, 2027. And then on page 
22. This is another another appropriation section. The money for the the new conditions at the state flood hazard area for state flood hazard area standards that remains three hundred thousand for two new positions. That was in the previous draft, but as new was on page twenty three at the top of the page at two hundred twenty five thousand dollars for contracting uh, to support adoption of the state flood hazard area standards. Um, we choose again, oh, page 25. Uh, at the end of the meeting yesterday, Senator McCormick raised a question about language that was potentially ambiguous in the necking of wetlands, state goal, or in a sentence that said, as a condition of the permit for activity in the wetlands, the secretary shall require necking wetlands. <laughs> you, Senator, asked what that was and how it might cause confusion. I recommend that they use the new bit. Page 25, line 9, it was the new uh, Moving on from there, you have your one last remaining question. And that is whether or not a wetland river and floodplain restoration project, including dam removal, is an allowed use or uh, exempt from regulation under the wetlands rules. You did not address this yesterday. Can you just say that one more time? Whether or not, whether it's an allowed use. So, so there are exemptions from wetlands permitting, where if you are exempt, you don't need to engage with the agency. It's an activity that just can go without any regulatory oversight. There's also whether you're an allowed use, which is something that the agency specifies in its wetlands rules. If you're an allowed use, you do need to engage with the agency and um, how you perform your allowed use. And there may be criteria or limitations on your allowed use as well, that's for your allowed use. The concern, excuse me, from the advocates is that allowed uses are sometimes um, differently applied by the different wetlands ecologists that work for EEC. So what some might uh, think is is allowed, others may not. Uh, and so the advocates are looking for a specific exemption, and the agency wants it to be allowed. And they want it to be allowed. And allowed. You so the department wants it to be regulated as an allowed use. It's another way of thinking of an allowed use, an exemption that you qualify for by talking to the agency and they say, yes, you're, I mean, that's an allowed use. Yeah, I mean, some of them are, you know, but some of them are not repair of a utility pole on a wetland. I don't think the utilities say, hey, can we do that or not? I think they probably just do it. But they probably informed the agency that they are doing it. Yeah, that would be an allowed use. Would be well. So this one seems a little upside down compared to the usual dynamics that I'm used to. Like I'm used to with the environmental orientation meaning check in and make sure you're doing the right thing before proceeding, as opposed to claiming an exemption. Uh, and so. Um, Maybe someone who wants to have it. But that's, I think, why when we had to have one thing down and leave it flag, I asked Michael to draft it as sort of a, what I thought of as more conservative, the two, like check in with the agency, um, knowing that the committee needs to decide. But um, that's why it appears in this form. Mr. Carpenter, can you explain the, the case for going to exemption? Well, no, actually, um, so Chair Carpenter, Lake Champlain Committee, for the record, um, we are certainly have the concerns that Mr. O'Grady cited about some subjective um, interpretation sometimes, but after discussing in the last week with the agency, we're okay with the allowed language. I think we'll discuss that. Thank you. Okay. So thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes. Yes. Hey, being a flag, sticky out. 
Thank you. Have a good day. Your next team on page 31. This is newly just a technical complaint change to recognize the restructuring of the bill to move the third quarter sessions to the front and then the um, reference for the two new positions uh, for wetlands had to change from I think it was three to five to 12 to 15. Um, Thank you. Oh, I see. And then the, your next change is on page 33. And that is a definition of dam removal uh, to recognize the agency's concerns. Uh, and then there, I guess there was some agreement. So it means all actions needed to eliminate the risk of dam failure related inundation below the dam and it partial or complete structural removal to the extent that the dam is no longer capable of both side impounding water liquid or sediment. Yes. I, I Next page is. Just checking anyone, anyone have second thoughts? Now that we're here. Very thoughts onwards. Next page is the language that GMP through, I think it was GMP through Zone would be requested for the clarification on jurisdiction over those non federal dams that TEC has some structural jurisdiction over. So it will say, except to the extent of regulation at those facilities related solely to electric generation under the Federal Power Act. Which is FERC regulated. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what the line said previously. It's bootstrapping. Thank you. Um, page uh, 41. Uh, line 15, the dam liability section previously was section 1091, and you asked that it be removed. You will see that the sections jump from 1090 to 1095. That's because everything between has been repealed in the past mm -hmm. and it does not need to be shown. So if you get that question on the floor, that's that should for sharp for sharp readers like where those Addison County folks are the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think we know that senator page 46 lines 12 through 16 <laughs> these are the the two subdivisions or the folks the nine two subdivisions for uh the dam safety revolving fund and eligibility for non-emergency funding. Uh, there was the agreement um, that for sub B, that there will be an alternatives analysis of dam repair, rehabilitation, and removal options that considers an evaluation of risk reduction in dam safety and ecological resilience and public benefits considerations and cost. And then under subdivision B2, this was the um, debate about whether it should be dam removal or construction that result in accepting the risk production are eligible for loan subsidy, and you chose to go with the uh, acceptable risk of reduction. Yes. <laughs> Moving ahead, let's get to page 52. This is on seven section 21 the appropriations for the expanded role of dam safety and just their general need so there is nine hundred thousand appropriated for the purposes of funding six new permanent full-time classified positions and two million appropriated in the general fund for purposes of implementation of your dam safety I admit that that two million is well. Let's just be real. All of the money is going to be taken out um, and put into the appropriations bill and played with right up until the last day. And but one of the things is the two million 
will probably hang in limbo until you pass 213 and the dam safety revolving drum fund actually exists and that's proposed. So, um, I also talked about the center angle to see if uh, institutions capital funds would. So he's aware of this is happening. I don't know if that committee would necessarily take any action in support of establishing such a fund or I don't know. I mean, I I I would opine that in the house, Representative Emmons never lets anything like this go without having some review by her. So I'll keep um Karen Eagle's surprised that he's aware of where to uh, establish this fund. Um, and we talked to Rep Emmons. Well, we'll get there eventually, right? For sure. Um, we talk to the dean of the house. We can direct. Spring a council. Absolutely. On page 53, you're now in the, the provision for the study video on dam emergency operations planning. Yesterday, the PUC requested to be removed from membership, and you did that. And so they've been removed, and the remaining subdivisions have been renumbered. Uh, on page 54, and what that study committee is going to do, they had previously said that they will identify dams in the state that are classified as high hazard and have significant potential. Opposition. Probability of flooding is something wrong. I need to discuss if that phrase was not necessary. We remove that. And then on page 56, what was a remaining question when you broke yesterday in section 23 as to which regulatory agency to take the lead and the positioning of FERC regarding the 21 dams transferring the PUC, the DEC. Uh, this morning, or actually very late last night, um, DEC uh, emailed and said that they will be the entity, but they moved the deadline to July 31st. The deadline has been set. Um, and have been December 31st. Oh, okay. okay. So, okay. Okay. thank uh, you for sorting that out. Do we have any notion of how long after that filing might come back for an answer? I think it is. Right. Um, and then I think the last change to the technical change paid 60 cents in the effective dates, uh, removing reference to the big liability set. Oh, no, it was removing reference to the emergency permit section. Oh, yep. You took the emergency permits out. Previously in the previous draft, and so I will say, I just so you have an idea. I think your base appropriation is going to be $4.9 million with um 16 new FPEs. The money might go over 4.9 million because you have it's probably not that much because you have a few different study committees with compensation in it. Um so I don't think you're gonna spend a hundred thousand dollars in compensation uh, for those study committees, but you're probably gonna Wind up uh, about four point nine five. Okay. Um, his this J. I know that JFO is working on a note. So they have two people assigned to it. Yeah. I will send them whatever is the final. Right. So, All right. 
patient at all. So well enough, probably by the time we go to growth. Um, yeah, the other thing that's unclear to me is just to what degree all these positions land in the Y25 budget yeah. versus some sort of phase, mm -hmm. practically speaking. Um, the appropriations will get more feedback in that center. Why even that's not Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, my question around the 16 FTEs is similar to yours, which is some of them are already temporary employees that were transitioning to two, two of them. Two of the 16. Two of the 16 are, are limited service positions at EEC for dams. And because you can't just like magically create them as permanent, you have to basically still create those two <laughs> permanent positions. <laughs> That's that. Those those two are in that sixteen. Okay, that's okay. Just want to make sure. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Okay, two things. I apologize for taking this back. And I, um, page thirty-three, definition of dam remo removal. But one part of it that I just, I, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around. Um, so dam removal means all actions needed to eliminate the risk of dam failure related. Inundation below the dam, including partial or complete structural removal. And this is the part that I don't understand quite to the extent that the dam is no longer capable of compounding water, liquid, or sediments. So that would be the goal of the removal, that it's no longer capable of impounding. Because that's what a dam is it's something that is capable of impounding water, liquid, or sediment. Okay. 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 Thank you. I was I was thinking about it in a different way. Um, what you're saying makes sense, though. Um, and just to just to articulate the way it, it had struck me was like that one thing that you could remove it to the extent. That it was already not functioning as a dam. You probably wouldn't would remove it if it wasn't right. capable of okay. Okay. I think what what you're saying makes sense. Thank you. Um, and then the only other thing is that I did have it suggested to me that one possibility just one put out there is uh, for the short title. Could it be the Flood Safety Act, or do we like it as it is? I. So, uh, I'm not sure to the new particular name, just that starting in November, I started calling it something like this, you know, before we had built. Um, one, two. Oh, okay. man. I like that it's short. Yeah, FSA. Um, any other thoughts? It's no aha. Uh -huh. It does. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh huh. Um, see the whole Um, it is you know that is the that has been the driving force. I mean, yes. underneath it all is climbing, but yes, it's the flooding that's had to the help writing the bill. So, um, I am fine with that change. I think that's a nice. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. I think the real question is, will you print another form for us? It's really the big question. Can you vote on the change in your study? Excuse me? Can you vote on it? Yeah, you need to vote in addition to the, the change. I, I have to remove all the highlighting oh. anyway. Yeah, okay. So, oh, please, what? whoever moves, moves to vote conditioned on it. On the change rate. Okay. So we're going to change the code safety act. 11th hour, great call. <laughs> Thanks. You dreamed that last night? No, it was suggested to me, but I, oh. um, I worked really hard to avoid using the word it was floated to me. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was too late. I said it. <laughs> but what? I don't think it changes your form necessarily. <laughs> um, all right. So the clerk needs something. Yeah, and we would need uh, a motion to amend the bill um, and with that extra condition that change to the title. I don't know. I move that we uh, amend the bill <clears throat> to 
the version of 7.1 uh, with the additional change to the title as mentioned, and that we find this uh, draft favorable and recommended to the Wilson Amendment. Okay. First week. Oh, we're going to do it first week. Two separate part? part? Yeah. Okay, two separate. Sorry. So just the adopt the 7.1 draft with the title change. And you want me all you have, on you it? Have the, you have the, oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So let's call them. Great. McDonald's? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Watson? Yes. White? Yes. Bray? Yes. Five zero. Zero on the name and adoption change. Now we need a motion to report out favorably to Bill as so I think. Oh, so moved. <laughs> McDonald. Yes. McCormick. Yes. Watson. Yes. White. Yes. All right. Yes. Oh, again, five zero zero. Um, and Good job, Senator Bray. Yeah, I'm <laughs> board, uh, if people would like to take a section, no. Um, for now, I'll just deal with it as Senator Bray, reporter. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, it is February 21st. I believe it on this since the first week in January. And so, um, a lot of good work. Now we're off to approach eventually to the house. Um, honestly, it's been a lot of people have worked all sorts of hours and they just have them inside and outside still. And I really appreciate how it uh, improved our, the work became over time. Oh, no. Why did we go into finance too? Because the use value study committee. Yeah. Um, and the effects on the effect on that the rate. Oh, right. Well, so thanks for that heads up. I'll talk to some colleagues. Either she might be willing to take that. Yes. I'll put it full of it. Come on. Send me a copy, Michael. Yeah, you can go do that right now. See how many puns we finished. Guys, I have a whole thing of puns. This is our cabaret skin. Oh, related to flood, flow, dam. Yes. Dam is actually yes. spelled more than one thing. This dam bill. Okay. Um, thank you. I mean, it's not easy. Um, um, right. But we're doing it for all of the Vermonters who were deeply impacted by the flooding this summer in December. I mean, this is what's motivated the work. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, we in danger. Yeah. I mean, especially, um, you know, we're, we're all entirely cognizant of the fact that we're also trying to address housing. Yes. So, and the preference is housing in developed areas. Developed areas are also subject to flooding, so we want to be smart about not constructing things in a harm's way that are vulnerable to flooding. And that would be a sad story. Build no floor housing and have it. Uh, well, house boat section here. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, there's no kind of sweet old for a <laughs> uh, Um, All right, so Wendy, let's take. We didn't really have a break, so let's take a, a break till 10 past.